Last week, we, we touched on some some big news in New York about stuff that we've been uh, breaking uh, out of the Midwest about stuff that's going on uh, out in New York We're related to the Bonanno crime family. Uh, both Jimmy and I have been uh, really on top of that. And, uh, you know, it's it's a minute by minute, second by second scenario. So we'll keep, you know, the more we learn over the next weeks and months, we'll, we'll keep you uh, in the loop. But uh, right now, as in the, you know, as, as in the last uh, 48 hours, there's been uh, some uh, plea agreements that has, uh, that have come up in federal court out of Manhattan uh, connected to the Genovese crime family, which is the, as we've talked about before, the Ivy league, the Cadillac uh, part, you know, the, the, the upper echelon of organized crime in America, you know, it's always been the Genovese crime family. They do things on kind of a, more elite level. They're the most, they're the, usually the most lucrative, the most secretive, the most stable. Yes. Do you agree those yes. three? And right now they're uh, headed by the guy that's considered the boss of bosses in New York, the most powerful mafia don in, in New York right now, allegedly Barney Belomo. Um, and some of Barney's guys uh, are, are going to prison. Uh, the, the two uh, capo regimes that were the, uh, marquee defendants in the April 22 indictment, racketeering indictment against uh, a handful of Genovese mob figures, uh, Ralph uh, the Undertaker Balsamo and uh, Nick, Nikki slash Khaleesi uh, were, were the headlining defendants, but there were other guys behind them. It, this looks like it was a, a kind of a global plea where everybody agrees to, to plead guilty and they're looking at 20 years but you know, most likely they'll, they'll probably end up doing, I'm guessing, seven or eight. But that's still, you know, that's still some some significant time for guys that are in their 50s and 60s. Balsamo's 51. They call him the Undertaker because he uh, has, uh, for years, has owned and and ran a, a funeral home in the Bronx, uh, and he is very close to Barney. Uh, Barney mentored him. They were. Uh, arrested together in a in a 2006 racketeering indictment. So you know Ralph Balsamo is is 51, and a lot of people in New York within the Genovese orbit, uh, including from, from what I hear, Barney look at at Balsamo as a guy that uh, is probably a future you know administrator in that in that crime family. Well, in that world, in your 50s is young, right? But and he's been made, I think, since his. 30s if not before that yeah so let's if we can just talk about this for a moment so that the official charges were, were racketeering conspiracy but if we go into the the details here um it's basically loan sharking Sports extortion gambling. and right operating illegal gambling businesses so that they meet sports betting um and so let's just talk about something here for a moment I, i'm i'm not trying to to be team LCN here. We're not Team Uncle Sam. I, I think I want audiences to understand we're Team OG Podcast. <laughs> so because sometimes we say things and people say, "Oh, you're you're siding with the government or you're siding with these criminals." I don't think we're siding with anyone, but but our podcast. But in this case, um, I, you know, are we really going to spend resources and taxpayers' do dollars busting guys for running loan sharking? and and sports betting operations it seems to me like there are there should be other priorities yeah. federal law enforcement should be working on not not that these are great guys or anything in, in, in this family but um and and my sense is if they're doing this it's because they want to use this as leverage to flip guys they want to flip balsamo so they can get balomo it's not going to happen right i, doubt uh, it. I think a yeah. guy like ralph uh balsamo who's done i believe two federal prison sen sentences in the last uh, decade plus. So this guy isn't a stranger uh, to the feds. Um, he kept his mouth shut in 06 when he was busted. He kept his mouth shut again um, when he got busted in 16. So, you know, good luck with that if you're the, the FBI in New York. You know, Nikki Slash, I don't know as much about. I know that he is the uh, capo regime that runs the South Florida rackets for the Genovese. He's based out of Boca Raton, even though he's uh, born and bred in the Bronx and still has uh, members of his crew that 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 live in the Bronx and, and handle his his New York affairs. But he's based out of uh, out of Boca. So. um 
it seems to me like they, they could be using their resources yes. and well, it, better it, endeavors. I think we addressed this at some point in the last couple of years. Um, there was a, a big Colombo crime family bust a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. And the, the three leading defendants were 87, 83, 78. One of them literally was dementia stricken and then died shortly thereafter. And, and like you're saying, it wasn't, they weren't being charged with murders <laughs> or violence. They were being charged with basic yeah. run of the mill racketeering, running sports books, juice loans and so forth. And it's like, how many tens of millions of dollars went into this investigation just to put away guys in their eighties that are going to die soon anyway, and aren't killing people. Yeah. And so it seems to me like the, the main concern of law enforcement should be public safety. And if, and if these guys aren't a threat to public safety, then I'm not sure what the urgency is now with racketeering. Like if we're talking about labor racketeering or, or some kind of like uh, infiltration of a legitimate business where there's extortion, then I'm, 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 um, you know, I don't think that that's good for, for that to be happening. So if there's a federal investigation in those areas, to me, that's a, that's a little different, but just for juice loans, uh, sports betting, running fucking card games and dice games. Uh, I'm not sure that this is the best use of, of our taxpayer dollars. And my editorial. Well, and I think <laughs> this, there's a means there, there's a, Method to the madness if you're the government, because prosecutors, FBI agents want heads on their wall. Yes. That's how I they agree. get promotions. Right. So even though Andy Mush Russo, when he was indicted a year or two ago and was 87 and didn't know what day it was, and literally, you know, they have tape recordings from that investigation with the capos and the soldiers being like, we can't bring anything to our boss because our boss doesn't know what state he's living in or, you know, doesn't know what happened yesterday. Can't recognize his, his wife. Um, and, and as I said before, he, he died pretty shortly after that uh, indictment, but the prosecutor that made the case and the FBI unit that made that case they took down an LCN Don, you know, an old school New York mafia boss, even though he didn't really end up doing any serious prison time for it. And even if he would have lived, he wouldn't have. That just that's that's a gold star. Yeah, on their there's still cachet to that when you're running yeah. it up the flagpole. Right. And even in this situation with Nikki superiors. Slash, Nikki Slash and, and Ralph Bassamo, not to mention two other alleged soldiers, Mike Messina um, from Connecticut and Johnny Campanella, who I'm told is one of um younger guy, 47 years old, allegedly a made guy. I hear he's one of Nikki Slash's uh, guys in the Bronx. Um, you know, the guys that made this case, you, 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 you took down two capos. Right. Yeah. So the, the superiors are going to be impressed with that. And when they need funding from Washington, D.C., they have to show these um, numbers. Yeah. And New York City is really the only FBI office that's consistently making LCN cases anymore. Right. Philadelphia. Well, that's because that's the only place where there is the right. <laughs> well, and in Philadelphia, we talked it about doesn't exist in Philly or Boston or Detroit. I mean, I think we talked about this with it with you know in Philadelphia. From what I'm hearing in in the FBI office and in their communications with the Justice Department in Washington D.C., the the people in Washington are actually saying what you're saying, mm. basically saying stop bringing these little dinky. Yeah bullshit ricos Clogging the system. that are only going to put these guys away for five six seven years yeah, it's interesting. it's a waste of money time and resources if you're going to bring a case you better bring murders so someone like joey merlino right now i i don't believe he'll face another racketeering case i i believe what i was told that the fbi office in philadelphia has been told you cannot bring another case like they've brought in a number uh over the last uh, decade plus uh, that that you aren't charging violence. Yeah, that this is just unless you're going to get major on a, hamster on a wheel. drug trafficking or murder charges. Why why even but, bother? And then just like what you said about New York, this most recent Philly bus that came down in 2020, they thought that they could take a guy like Dom Grande, who is Joy Merlino's and and Joy Merlino's right hand, Stevie Mazzone's protege, the guy that is being tapped to be the future of this crime family. He's a young guy. He's younger than us. Uh, I think he's 43 and has never done prison time before. 
And his dad was a cooperator. That's right. I can guarantee you the only point of that bust, in addition to being able to say they got Stevie Mazzone, they got an underboss, like I get gold star on the resume, but they thought they could get Grande, who they think is involved in a murder, even though they never charged it. And they thought that they could jam him and that Grande would give them Merlino and, and Mazzone because he was looking at seven or eight years in prison. And I, Dom Grande, in my opinion, is or he just reported a couple of weeks ago, but like, I think he like, he ran to the prison uh, gates. Mm -hmm. This is something that's good for his career. Yeah. It gives you some street cred and, and he's not going to have a, short. it's not going to be a tough, right. I mean, it will be tough that he has to be away from his wife and his newborn kid. And I mean, that's nobody wants that, of course. but, but it ain't, it ain't going to be regular time. It's going to be easy time. He'll be out in six or seven years, eight years. And, and he'll come out. He might come out as the, as the new acting boss. He, he went in a capo. Yeah, so I think, and, and I mean, there are finite resources that the federal government has. Um, I know it doesn't seem like it. They can just keep on borrowing money from China. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, you know, in some ways, there's a finite um, you know, amount of resources. So to me, I would focus on the, the, more, the most violent predatory criminals you know, and I, I don't want it to seem like, oh, you're just giving the Italians a free pass. There's something very but. sexy for the U.S. government still, just like the public romanticizes the mafia. I think the government does, too. And they almost like fetishize over it. I think especially on the East Coast, because yeah. here they don't. Right. The, the Midwest guys. I don't know about Chicago, but part but of that, Detroit, they don't. The feds here don't care about the but, Italians. OK, but isn't part of that uh, regional? I mean, yeah. what's happened in the last 20 plus years with the uh, war on terrorism and the, the, the city of Detroit yeah. being the biggest no, there's population of Middle sure. Easterners in, in the country. Um, yeah. When it comes to Chicago, we're in a uh, fentanyl crisis and the hub for the uh, cartels. cartels is in Chicago. So, And both Chicago and Detroit in terms of violent crime on the 11 o'clock yeah. news every night, it's, it's in black neighborhoods yeah. and affiliated with street, street and a gangs lot of, so. a lot of bloodshed. So that's where the federal resources are. And, and so I get it like scale, like, right. The Italians aren't, aren't as, you know, um, uh, the, the scale is much smaller in Detroit than it used to be. And so that point well taken. So they're, they're going to divert resources toward counterterrorism, narcotics, whatever, but, but that's, how it should be, as mm -hmm. it should be, I would say, because those are the most urgent, yeah. in my opinion, in terms of public safety, public health. Those are the most urgent uh, and, issues. And keeping it uh, in, in the East Coast, but just for a second, jumping away from New York City. It used to be for years and years and years, whatever city you were in, you had three separate law enforcement agencies tracking OC. You had the FBI, you had whatever police department that that city had, and then you had the state police. Well, it doesn't look like cities and states are really making OC cases anymore. No. It's just up to the feds. But there's an exception to that right now. In Rhode Island, in Providence, you have the Rhode Island State Police that have been public uh, going to the media and, and also through the, the court filing system where they're letting everybody know that they have a full court press right now on good looking Maddie Guglielmetti's crew. Mm. And all this information is being um, disseminated through Rhode Island State Police files, um, where a good looking Maddie Guglielmetti, you know, the OG's OG out in Providence, 75 years old, uh, dates back to uh, Old Man Patriarcha, um, has been a capo since the 80s. At one point, he was the underboss of the Patriarchas. Now I've heard that he's he stepped down in the last couple of years um, because of health reasons. But his, one of his protégés, uh, a, a guy named uh, Dino Gometti, you know, just took a drug case where he uh, has pled not guilty and is, is fighting it and is the subject as well as Maddie and then a very prominent business person or a very prominent business family in Rhode Island that are the uh, cannabis, the legal cannabis kings of, of Providence. They own um, the, 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 the most 
uh, lucratively licensed retail marijuana business is owned by this McGraw family. And the, the wife, McGraw, is a subject of this Rhode Island State Police cocaine investigation that involves Dino Gometti mm. and Maddie Guglielmetti. Wow. Um, you mean most lucrative in that region or nationally? Most, or? No, sorry. Most lucrative in Rhode Island. In Rhode Island, okay. They, he has the, the biggest, or her husband, who I just want to be clear, was, has not been implicated in any criminal activity um, other than the fact that there are phone calls going and texts going back and forth between the husband and Dino Gilmetti. I know it gets confusing here because we got Dino Gilmetti and then you have Maddie Gugliametti. But <laughs> Dino. Easy for you to say. Right. No, it's, confu it's confusing. I know. I know. Uh, Dino, um, for you sports fans out there, Dino's uh, wife slash uh, baby mama is the widow of Aaron Hernandez. Shayana Jenkins. Aaron Hernandez, the Aaron Hernandez, the former NFL player the, that the, was the a documentary. was a murderer Are that you... died in prison of a suicide. Whoa. His baby mama, Shayana Jenkins, is now with Dino Gilmetti. No shit. Yes. And Dino is wow. under indictment right now on a, a pill case, and he is the focus of a another drug investigation into cocaine trafficking and Maddie Gugliametti, the former underboss, current capo in Providence and Elizabeth McGraw are also focuses of that Rhode Island state police investigation. Can we get uh, shameless self-promotion? We had uh, Steve O'Donnell, who was an undercover yeah. uh, police investigator for Rhode Island state police. We have an episode, new England mafia undercover. I think that's just an audio episode right now. We don't have that oh, up on. Oh, that was, oh, though he called in, right. He called in. Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah, so you can see that on YouTube. Um, we we got to get him back on. Yeah, and, and then uh, there's another guy that I've been uh, talking to um, who was a, uh, Steve O'Donnell was a, was a state police. I've been talking to a former um, FBI OC in Providence. Oh, right. Um, uh, Brendan Doherty, and I'm, I'm hoping that uh, yeah. we'll, we'll bring him on as well. But I just wanted to throw that out there to be like, this is the, it's, it's an outlier of a situation that you yeah. have a state police organization going after OC. Yeah, for sure. Uh, you don't hear that, that, uh, that often, um, especially for, for uh, the Italians. Um, and maybe to bring it for, uh, full circle, um, talk about a, a, a Gambino case right, right now. That's, that's what I was going to bring up, yeah. Uh, Danny Fama, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh, Longtime New York mob figure. Uh, you know, facing another case. And uh, Gangland News a couple weeks ago reported that uh, the recent court filings in that case allege that Danny Fama has gotten a button uh, from the Gambinos, has, has been made. He was um, someone that you know, came on the scene in the 1980s and was a member of uh, Sammy the Bull and John Gotti's uh, kind of JV faction, I guess you could say, you know, guys that they were grooming to become mob soldiers and um according to the government danny fama was the the getaway driver in the last mob hit that john Gotti ordered uh he's been acquitted of those charges so a jury found him not guilty but uh was implicated as the getaway driver in the eddie the chink garofalo murder which was uh ordered by john Gotti a couple months before he was indicted what was that about why did he I, I think it was a... Uh, was Garofalo a made guy? Garofalo was a made guy. That's what I thought. Yeah, okay. and um, I'm not positive about all the circumstances. I think he got caught stealing. Um, he, uh, there was another uh, member of the Gambinos that was also called Eddie Garofalo who went by Uncle Eddie. I believe they were cousins. Um, they called uh, Eddie the Chink. They gave him that nickname because he had slanty eyes. <laughs> It seems to be a, uh, it's very on PC, but yeah. that's where the, that's where the, um, the name comes from. I had a, uh, <laughs> quick digression. I had an uncle named Chicky and I always wondered where the nickname Chicky came from. And I asked my grandma and they're like, well, he had eyes like an Asian and it was, it was, uh, on, it wasn't proper to say Chinky. So we just started calling him Chicky. Jeez. <laughs> wow. But there are a number actually of, 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 uh, mob members that have, had that name um 
nickname. And and do we know why it took so long for him to get his button? Well, yes. So the, what uh, has been alleged over the years in court filings uh, was that he didn't want it. Yeah, that's significant, I think. Yeah. And that was like a part of why some of his past legal issues, he didn't serve as much time as he might have mm-hmm. because the government was almost like giving him like credit for not wanting to become a, a main. Oh, well, and I, I would assume that's why he didn't. I don't know. I don't really know much about this person or this yeah. case, but I'm assuming he didn't want the headache that comes with uh, once you're <clears throat> a made guy. Uh, eventually, the feds are going to put you on their bulletin. <laughs> yeah, picture of you on their bulletin board. Um, so, but that's interesting how things have changed because you know for so long, if you're part of that underworld, to to be made is the right. That's the ultimate um, goal. So and he's about uh, there's guys who buy their buttons, right? <laughs> let alone turn it down. So, um, Fama's a, about to turn sixty or close. To, he's pushing up on sixty. I think he's like fifty eight. Uh, the, the Garofalo murder took place in Brooklyn in uh, August of 1990. Uh, it, it looks like Gotti and, and Gravano thought the Garofalo was going to cooperate. Um, and he, he, he was um, tried and uh, jury found him not guilty. Uh, you know, he was implicated by Sammy the Bull. Mm. So Sammy the Bull, when he flipped, gave information on all the murders that he are was involved gonna, in. Are they going to bring him back for this? No, no. The the that case is already. He was acquitted like eight, oh, years, eight years. ago. So he was acquitted in right. two thousand fourteen. So they can't. This they is can't, a, this is another case that, that it, it isn't related to any violence. I see. But Gravano was prepared to testify against Fama back then. I'm not sure if he did. But uh, you know. Uh, Fama was a guy that, uh, you know, he spent 17 years behind bars. He's, he's realized that he, you know, he can keep his mouth, or the, the mob knows that he can keep his mouth shut. Sure. He's always been known as someone that was capable, reliable, uh, an earner. Um, so it, it's, it, it's, just, it's, it's interesting to learn, according to the government, he changed his opinion on whether or not he should get a button. And, and at some point, probably in the last five years, has been in, inducted um, into the Gambino crime family by uh, Italian Dom Cifalu, maybe before Frankie Boy uh, Cali died, who knows, or maybe it was Lorenzo Menino, who's the reputed uh, boss now, who took over for Frankie Boy. Well, some interesting updates on uh, the East Coast, and we'll, we'll keep on talking about these things. Well, um, can I throw one more thing out? Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I know we're all over, the, all over the place in this episode, but uh, we talked about Barney. And I want to, we kind of opened with what we were talking about last week. And so let's end with it, uh, with what's going on. The Bananos, uh, this factional dispute between the boss of the Bananos, Mikey Knows Mancuso, and the Camerano brothers. Uh, Joe C. Camerano was Mikey Knows' former acting boss, uh, unsuccessfully tried to oust Mancuso from his post when Mancuso was in prison. Mancuso came out of prison, put Joe Camerano and a number of people close to Jim, Joe Camerano on the shelf. Then this past summer, told Camerano that he couldn't go to his father-in-law's funeral. Uh, melee broke out at the funeral. And according to what we're hearing, Mancuso has hit teams out searching for uh, Joe Camerano and his brother Dino. Um, one thing that I've reported recently was, is that this is something that is upsetting other crime families and it's not just Mancuso's top advisors in the Bananos, specifically Vinny, Vinny TV Battle of Many, who I heard is his most trusted advisor and someone that he, he leans on and was named, quote unquote, conciliary for life. Uh, that Battle of Menti is one of the people that is counseling him to, to, to knock it off. That uh, Bruno and Delicato, a uh, recently released soldier capo, goes back all the way to the 70s. Same type of advice, but it's not just coming from the Bananos. I've heard that specifically Barney Belomo is sending word that this is disturbing him. And, and he worries what the collateral damage is going to be from Mikey Mancuso's, you know, crusade for vengeance. Like 
And I don't think it's, we always talk about this. I mean, I don't, I don't think it's a moral or, or ethical thing, even oh. though I do believe that there's a lot of people so that they like, like him. They everybody like likes him. the Camerano. Yeah, so right. that works in their favor. Sure. But so it's part of it. If this wasn't something that had the potential to get other mob bosses ensnared in their mind, when bodies start dropping, you know, the full court press is going to be on for all of the mob families. Uh, I don't know if they would care. But because they view this as something that can blow back on them, they care a great deal. Yeah. If, if they're busting guys for juice loans and gambling, can you imagine if bodies start dropping? Right. So I think I agree with you. That's my understanding is that it's a public relations. And Barney, ha- and Barney although he is you know, been a suspect in, in gambling homicides in his career, um, including his his best friend uh but you know 60 year old barney's 66 right now and i i heard that when barney came out of prison in in the 2000s he put an edict on the street and no more hits yeah keep it low key yeah so uh you know barney is revered you know he, he is someone that uh every mobster in new york looks up to has respect for uh, he is a ghost. We've talked about it before. You know, there's like maybe two or three photos of two or three recent photos of this guy that have made it online. One of them from like a Google image search with him walking out of a pizza place with his son. But yeah. just is incredibly insulated and um, isn't happy about what's going on uh, with the banana. So I reported that. I also reported that Lorenzo Menino is another person that has been the, the Gambino boss who's been reaching out and that both Menino and uh, Belomo know the Camerano family personally. Belomo yeah. knew, from what I heard, uh, knew Josie's dad really well, Joe, Joe Saunders. And I've heard Menino actually knows Josie really well. Yeah, they're, they're, my understanding is they're well-liked and uh, for a long time. Yeah. You know, um, and the Grimaldi family too. Yes. Like, well, well-respected and they're part of that interconnected interconnected so well we'll keep on updating people uh just want to remind everyone please follow us on social media if you don't please spread the word uh please follow us on youtube and um we hope to bring you more content we hope to eventually have merch and um it's a it's a you know we're, we're working as fast and furious as we can but as I've said before, not to beat this dead horse, but the three of us all have day jobs. <laughs> and so it's it's not as easy to to, to, to put as much uh, resources into this as we'd like, but we, we do our best. So we appreciate you for following us and like, liking us. Su- like, subscribe, share. Please, yeah. Spread the word. And I'll have my OG hat back on next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, Walked out of the house sh- without it. <laughs> people want to know where they can get it. But, well, hopefully, <laughs> but on, you know, on a serious note, hopefully by the spring, we will have a uh, kind of a gear store for for people to purchase uh, og fun. branded uh, merchandise so. yeah that would be fun so thanks for listening we'll see you next week i'm jimmy b scott bernstein we're out out oh.